Welcome everybody. This is the Nature Journal Workshop and today we're going to be looking at how to draw things that are moving. Um, we also are going to be working at um, how, to, how to suggest movement in your drawing. So again, it's two different things. One is the subject of what you're drawing is going to be, is not going to be holding still and being really cooperative. Thing number two is you want to, in a drawing, be able to show that something is moving around. And so I have a volunteer right here. So, so your subject keeps, keeps kind of doing around like, how do, you, how do you, in all this movement, how do you freeze one thing and get that down? And then on your piece of paper, how can you show those different kinds of actions and behaviors that those creators have? All right, two different ideas and you can do it in your journal. Let's take a look at some strategies that you can use. This, this first idea here is about how do you, how do you show, a few papers around here, um, your, 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 your subject, the critter itself is moving. Um, birds are a great example of this. Mammals will be doing the same thing. You know, even if you sit down and you start to draw your sleeping cat, <laughs> partway through your, your drawing, what's going to happen is your cat's going to move. And you're like, oh, would you please come back to that pose? And cat, cat is not going to cooperate. <laughs> cat is, is, is just going to keep that, that, that move around. Now, um, so here's, here's the general strategy that, that I use. And it's, you have to just kind of get yourself out of the idea of this is uh, just like drawing a photograph or having a, a subject that you can say, can you go back to that pose? Um, let's say you're looking at a bird. Uh, there's a blue bird and it hops up on, on a post near you. And so you start to draw that bird. And if you've seen my, my bird drawing approach before, I usually start just with whatever the angle is behind its back. And what is that angle there? I block in the position of its head and sometimes even put a little beak on that, little eye beak line. And then the little angle right underneath its throat sort of, sort of attaches this head onto this body. So this angle, this angle with a head between them. That gives me a place to sort of lock in the body. You can see sort of a more kind of elaborate description of this in that recent video that I did on drawing, on drawing birds. But let's say you're about to kind of go on in the rest of this drawing and right at this point, this bird moves, right? Um, I do not have a photographic memory. I have a hard time, I have a hard time um, when I am, uh, you know, I, I can hold just a, a few little ideas uh, in my head. And so I can't just sort of recall that, like pulling up a picture in my head. What I do is that now the bird, it's turned its back to me. I, on the same piece of paper, so don't, don't turn over and go, oh, I'm gonna start a new drawing over here. Right next to it on the same piece of paper, I'm going to start a new drawing here. So here is, here's the back of the head and it's gonna be a little bit wider at the shoulders, all right? And then, then here's the ball of that body coming down. I can see a tail coming down. So I'm gonna start this drawing and start to work along on it. And you know it's up on this post, right? And now the bird takes its head, I'm trying to draw the back of the head here, and it takes its head and it turns it to the side. So I'm seeing the profile of that bird. What I'll do is now it's looking out this direction, right? I had this drawing over here starting looking out this direction. What I'll do is right next to it here, I will start a new drawing of that, that, that head position. And just sort of say that you know from the this is this is the head position from from the back, but I'm looking at the side here. So I have this one looking this way. I have this one looking this way. I have this one here 
of looking at the back of the bird. Now it turns its head, I'm looking at the back again. I've already got this blocked in. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, I'm going to start, actually I want this here. I'm going to just start the more of my, my regular drawing. I've got enough sort of initial block it in information here that I can put down my non, the non photo blue pencil I'm using and I'm going to start drawing this thing and we look at it and say, oh, it's got a little indentation on the sides of the heads. It kind of goes down and it expands, all right? So I'm now drawing whatever details I see on the back of the head of this bird. And I can see there's a little V of where its back feathers are coming down. And I start to work, now, uh, it moves again. I started drawing this thing and it moves, but this time it moves back into this position. Kind of just rotates around. If I wait for it to come back to this pose, it never will. So what I'm going to do is just jump over here. I've already got a lot of information down. I'm going to say, oh, okay, your wing, you have a big wing and it's going to come down like this. All right, there's a little bit more information, and the post is about this far beneath you, and your leg comes down to it there. You've got a foot hanging over it. So I'll just continue working on this. So I'm not getting tunnel vision locked into any one of these drawings. Right? And then I start to draw. I can put down my pencil and start to draw. All right, little bluebird, here is, here's your little bluebird forehead. And I'm gonna start to work my way around this picture. Now, as I'm starting to do this, my bird moves again. This time, it just takes its head and it turns and it looks at me. It's like, oh my gosh, there's this cool, there's this cool front view, All right? And so I'm gonna start a little front view drawing right over here and I'd say like, okay, it's got a beak in the middle. I can see eyes kind of out there on the side, All right? And starting to draw in my beak. Now it turns its head again, All right? So I'm gonna drop right back to this one. And I'm going to see what is, where's the boundary of where the blue is on the throat. And I'm just continuing to draw here. Again, this isn't so much a class on how do you draw the bird. Um, other classes I get into like understanding eye rings and, and those sorts of details. But here, what I'm really trying to emphasize is this idea of not getting locked. Oh no, my bird just moved again. This time, it's given me this pose. Oh, actually, what it did is it flew away. It flew, totally flew away. You know, if it had gone back to this, of course, I'd go back to this drawing. It flew away, and so I'm now going to go running, chasing my bird with my journal in my hand across the field, and ah. Bluebirds like to go to exposed perches. This has now gone to another exposed perch in a different location, and but I'm now further away from it. This was this nice close view. I'm not getting these sort of really intimate details anymore. Instead, I, I'm getting sort of a, a further view. It's, it's on a different post, but it's in somebody over the fence and I can't get to it. So, I'm just going to start a new drawing on the same page. This time, just sort of showing the amount of detail that I can see from, from that location.
So you don't have to pretend that you've got some incredible vision and you can see all the details that you can't see. If this is all I have, I am going to just, I'm just going to work with that. All right, and here's my fence. You know, I'm getting actually a lot of interesting information just here with my little bluebird on its fence post. And I can add in some written notes, sort of show that it flies out. Snap. Oops, I'm off my screen. It flew out. Snap, caught an insect. Caught insect. And then back and um, out. And then back to same post. All right. So look at that. We just told a story here. We've got, you get a sense of the activity and, and motion of this thing because I have, I've got a side view, a back view, I've got the head pointing this way, and I've got the head pointing this way. I've got this distant thing, and I'm telling a little story here. The little bird comes out, it caught the little bug here, and then it came back here. So that is showing movement. That's showing movement. And the arrows help tell the story. All these different poses start telling the story. If it's really cooperative and it does return to a, a post, you know, and you can then get closer to it, you can continue working on whatever drawing you were doing. But you know, very often you're not going to, you're not going to be able to do that. And uh, it's, it's because it's, it's not going to give you, it's not going to cooperate like that. So just work with whatever nature gives you and be willing to kind of flow from one drawing to another drawing to another drawing. You do not need to finish any one of these. So if there's something where you just got a little pose for a moment, boom, that's great. Um, if um, you can get more over there, that's also cool. You're going to find that if you have drawings on your page that are in different stages of doneness, that actually adds a lot of real visual interest to your drawing, um, to the, the, the journal page. People will look at that and go like, oh, it's cool. They can kind of, it'll, they'll feel like they're going on this adventure with you. Oh, it just did this briefly, and then it did this more. Um, if everything is carefully all at the same level of completion, you probably have had to make up a lot of stuff, or you probably have had to like go back and look at other reference material because you think you're supposed to get everything to the same degree of doneness. You don't have to do that. So some of your drawings can be these starts, some of the drawings can be worked out in more detail. If the only thing like, you know, now the bird, it just hangs out here for the next half an hour, um, then, hold on a second, the bird hangs out there on that little post for the next half hour, and it doesn't come back to being a cooperative bird here, then you can, and you really can't see more information about it, then I can, I'll just work with this as far as I can. So this is where my bird is being cooperative. Okay. That's what I'm really going to work with. And it's on the red fence post, one of those metal posts. Okay. 
if you're in a really humid place, just leave a little white glow around the edges of your drawing so that your, um, your pencil, I mean, so your, your, your areas of paint don't come in contact with each other. So, there we go. So you see, I'm just leaving a little halo. It's very handy in high humidity environments. Eventually they do dry. So adding a little bit more value into the suggestion the suggestion of the forest back here. So there is the little bluebird. On the post, you now get a sense of the kind of habitat that it's in. Might make the blue here a little bit more vivid because bluebirds have such a lovely bright blue to them. Right, so that's that's one approach here. And so what you're you're seeing here, both in this, is you're getting a little bit of the story, and you are getting a bunch of these different poses. <clears throat> There's another strategy that I will often use when I am drawing something that is moving. And I call it making a hydra. So if you remember from mythology, hydra was the monster um, that uh, if you cut off one of its heads, it would grow two in that place. And so um, here is the, 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 the challenge for when you're drawing. You are, let's say you've got, uh, you, you, you see an elk out there on the landscape. You're like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. I get a chance to see an elk, all right? So you start your, your elk drawing, and I'm gonna start it the same way. There's a, just an angle across the back, the neck comes down, what is that neck angle? And then the angle across the back. Um, I'm gonna, it's going to have a head block in here. And then block of its body. I don't have an elk to look at right now as reference. So this may be an oddly shaped elk. Um, and then what I would do is I would look at how far down below, so just initially trying to get the proportions of body to neck length to head, and when I get that kind of working for me, then I'm going to work at the proportions of body to ground and where, how far those legs are going to come down. So I'm gonna look at how far down here is the ground below this body level. If my body's this thick, where's my ground? Somewhere down here, All right? And I would probably start by just looking at that negative shape of the air underneath this negative shape here. 
the negative shape of the air underneath those legs. Now, as I'm starting to do this, all of a sudden, its head, instead of being, being up here, its head goes down and it starts grazing in front of me. And I go like, oh. Well, you wait and you wait and you wait for it to put its head up, but what if it doesn't? Um, so instead of waiting, what I do is I'll create a hydra and I'll go like, oh, all right, now it's giving me this new interesting negative shape here, right? And, and its head is now coming down here. And I find it's very, very helpful to look at what is this negative shape here between neck and the front leg. So it was doing this up here. Now it's down here. And it's much, much, much foraging and browsing and grazing on, grazing on the grasses that are down here. So if it starts to, if it seems to you like this is going to be its pose for quite a while, then what I'll do is I'll just work with this drawing and there'll just be this other little pop-up head here. So, um, say I, you have that kind of cool mane, don't they? So I'm gonna kind of have a suggestion of the mane. Whatever the negative shapes are doing in this area, I'm paying attention to that and, and, and drawing that. And what is, I don't have the real elk here, but if I were looking at a real elk, I'd really be paying attention to what is the angle around here? Is it rounded? Does it come to more of a sharp point? I'm gonna guess that it's gonna do something like this. And um, it is a, huh, it's not an Irish elk. It doesn't have the ridiculously large antlers. Um, but you'll look at, you know, whatever your shape. We can do another workshop another day on drawing antlers. But for now, this will do. So I can get this, um, this head up. I can just leave it like that. If it doesn't put its head up anymore, this will be mostly, and sometimes they'll walk around with their head down as they're feeding on different sorts of things. And as they do, these leg positions will change. But what I'm going to try to do, is that one right? Yes. Um, what I'll try to do is, you know, generally you'll have just sort of pay attention. Like if one is, if this one is straight, do that. If one is straight, does the other one tend to be kind of out? This one is down here. This is the leg, this other leg tend to be back like this, or does it tend to come forward? I can have just a suggestion of different legs, leg positions in there. As it walks forward, you'll see this back one kind of do that briefly. So this one has two heads, one, two, it's got five legs. But you can, by getting more of these positions in, you can, you can get a, uh, a, a feeling for kind of the movement, the motion of those sort of things. If I am adding color to this, um, I will drop in some watercolor on it. I wouldn't watercolor in all of these legs. You can sort of choose which one. Oh, wow, it just put its head up. All right, so 
and let's say I had this, and now I, and then you say like, but I, I really want to, I really want to get this sort of this, this, this head up position, all right? Because it just looks so kind of like challenge butter. Now I've got two kind of worked out. I could have just left that as, you know, it had one sort of blue um, and one like this. But now I've got these two heads kind of competing with each other. I kind of made that one's head a little bit big there, didn't I? I think I did. Wish I had a real, oh, to compare it with. One of my big strategies when I'm drawing is that if I can't see a detail from the, 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 the range, the distance where I'm looking at it, I don't draw it in. So I just started to draw an eye. I was thinking like, my eye should be doing something like this. And I was going like, I really don't, I have no idea really what that should be doing. So if you can't see it from this distance, I'm just gonna leave it out. You now have a choice of which one of these you wanna make into your drawing, right? Uh, your 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 color. So what, when I put color in on it, I'm gonna see, let's see, I'm gonna go with that that head up one. All right, this uh, elk sometimes get darker belly and legs. All right now, where is another one? The brush. Um, I'm going to leave this one and some of these legs out. So there'll be a watercolor painting with some of this stuff, sort of kind of as my final drawing. But then you'll see these little moments of other head positions. And that really also helps you get this sense of motion and movement in what you're doing. So I'm going to test my watercolor off on the side, and it's going to be kind of a strongly backlit elk. So I'll often put in my if you've seen my approach before, I, you know, I like to put in my, um, my shadow first. And then, because those values are more important than whatever kind of general color you're seeing. And over that, I'm putting some hint of brown, need a darker belly, darker on that leg. On the males, one of the things that makes that belly so dark is that in breedings in the rut, they will they'll actually urinate on their front legs and their back legs here and then roll in the mud. And so they get all this sort of this dark belly from that. Works for that. And a little bit of, I think I'm going to have this be one of those tule elk out in the Point Reyes Peninsula. Um, you go there in in evening, and you can look out all you know, these wonderful elk silhouetted against the, the ocean and the evening sky. So I'm going to just put in. Um, let's see here. I have sort of a low horizon back here where my ocean is going to be.
So it's gonna paint over that other head. Um, and it's some um, evening, evening light. I want these legs to stand out a little bit more. Um, if they feel like they're the same color as that background, then yeah, it's going to look weird. All right. So there is, when you kind of look at it, you have this head up, you have this head down. You could have gone with this one. You could have gone with this one. Here's this other leg position. All those little pieces are, 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 are out there. They're part of the, the drawing. And that adds a lot of, a lot of motion to what you're seeing. One final way that you can suggest motion in a picture is with a series of frames. So uh, you can use, just take a look at graphic novels and you'll see what they do. And you'll see that there's you know, a series of overlapping frames or, or they can be adjacent or I'm gonna put these overlapping or maybe those overlapping and this one adjacent. And because we're used to reading from the left to the right, when I look at this little format, and so uh, at, at first, you know, all the elk were bedding, bedded down, all right, and And then um, one more elk came in from the side. And you know, these are it's one, it's one of these sort of bachelor groups where they're all males. So they're, everybody's getting antlers up in here. All right. And so I'm going to draw a little arrow in, maybe some notes, uh, resting. There were two that were resting. Um, large bull joins, and then the three of them go off together. Three leave together. All right? And you can add, you could add color to this, you could add, so you can think of, you can think of these little storyboards as, as, as being a way of really quickly, really simply recording a bunch of, of information, telling the story of what happened in whatever place you were observing. I do think it's kind of fun to have some of your story, your little storyboards overlap each other, others don't. And, but we're just so used to reading this direction 
that people will look at that and naturally pick up the story, the movement in whatever you were looking at. Jack, there was also, um, I don't know if this is the, in the same realm, but as far as movement, um, movement on the surface of the water or movement of birds in flight, like wings spread. Um, th so that, um, I, I think that for, for, for birds in flight, that should be a, a topic for an entire class. I'll put together um, a workshop for you on, on birds in flight. Um, actually, there's one really kind of quick bird in flight thing that I can show you for the small birds. Um, but for uh, larger birds in flight, I think it really deserves its own, its own class. Um, for, so I think I'll, 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 yeah, I think I should defer that for, for there. Um, for movement of water, that is, um, that, that, that also would require, I think, a, a, a separate, separate topic. Fairly recently, I did something on drawing water with pen and showed a few strategies for, um, for still and moving water. Um, but it's such a, a different topic than these animals that are moving. So we will do more work together on drawing, um, uh, on, on drawing water. It's such a, it's such a wonderful topic that, um, it, 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 and there's lots of different sorts of tricks that you can use to help you do that. So I think that both of those, those topics really do deserve a deep dive. I think for, save those for a full Thursday, we'll do birds in flight, um, preview of things to come. We'll be making bird models, we'll be holding them at different angles and really kind of understanding some of the, the dynamics of how foreshortening changes as things are are flying around. Um, so we'll, we'll do some work on that. And, um, but let me show you one fast trick for small birds in flight. So small birds, like the big raptors, they, they'll hold their wings in a locked out position and then they'll cruise around like that. The small birds are just their wing. So what you're trying to draw is watch my hand. So the, the raptors are doing this. The little birds are doing this. All right. How do you draw that? All right. So I'm glad you asked. So let's take a look at that piece of paper. So I'm going to have a little drawing of a bird, small bird in flight. So let's say you're at, at the river. I'm going to make this a dipper. You, in, in, you see one of the dippers. Now dippers have these little fast wing, wing beats and they go just, just blasting up the, the, the stream. What I'm going to do is I draw I've got just a, you know, two, um, two circles in a line here. Here's my head, all right? Here's my body, and the tail is gonna be kind of coning out behind that. If you're looking at it straight on from the side, um, you might see, you know, the, 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 a, a tail, but this is a long, very short tail bird with big undertail covert. So I basically have a little cone, little cone in the back. I'm going to draw my head a little bit more deliberately. All right. And I'm going to draw my tail end a little bit more deliberately. And in the middle of those, I have my flapping wing. All right. And what I'm going to do is just Where's my, where's my flapping wing? And so I might just have a, 
you know, a, more of the head. There's a blur in the middle. And if you want to, you can kind of even get your finger in there and blur that more. Monkey finger. And uh, there you go. So that's that's the the fast flying uh, dipper, just uh, blasting up the stream. You're going to see a little darker on the head, darker on the back end, and everything is just. Uh, you cannot pick up. You'll see these these uh, photographs where amazing, amazing photographs of birds in flight, where you can even see a stopped position of a hummingbird's wing in flight in in position. Our brains cannot pick up that much detail. And so, if you try to draw that hummingbird wing. You know, here's here's your your hummingbird and it's hovering. So you know, sometimes they there's a little head and the tail will sometimes be down, sometimes up as they're 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 they're, they're flying along here. Um, what you'll be seeing is just it, there'll just be a blur across that. So here is more of the, this end, there's more of this end, and there's just a blur in there. And so that's, that's, that's what I draw. I draw what I see. If you instead do this, I'm gonna get rid of that, and I'm going to draw the wing coming down, and there's all these long primary feathers, and then there's very, very short little secondary feather zone in there. All right. This is a drawing of a photograph of a hummingbird, as opposed to a drawing of what you see in the hummingbird. And so, yeah, our brains are not capable of picking this out. So what I recommend doing is to draw what you see. Um, and there's nothing wrong with going back home and drawing a picture of a photograph, but realize that you're not drawing sort of the experience as you would really experience it. You know, this is, you can do that to understand the hummingbird's wing more, um, but it is, but that's, that's, that's different than, than what you will actually, so you're, there's so much motion, your eye can't do that. Your eye can't do that on your own. So when you, when you do choose to draw that, you are drawing, um, you're making a drawing of, uh, of the incredible thing that a camera can do with, 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 with light and megapixels. Um, here we go. Just a time check here, it's um, five minutes to one. Yeah, so this is um, actually probably a good time to pull this together. There's a handful of tricks for showing motion in your drawings or dealing with something that is actually moving around. Could I borrow your kitty again? Okay. All right, All right. so this is uh, Amelia's Bodie, um, her birthday kitty. Um, everybody say happy birthday. I mean, actually, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll say happy birthday to you later. Yesterday was her birthday, new cat. Um, now, uh, so um, Amelia, as we've been doing this, has been, <laughs> this is fun. Um, so she has been working on um, drawing, you know, the drawing just sort of, you know, imagine that the cat that you're drawing is moving. There you go. So as the cat moves, you move with the cat. And so you can get multiple drawings um, from, from, different, from different angles. And notice uh, she's got little notes on there about kind of using one page. And it's, it really kind of tells more of the story of you know, what, is, what is going on with whatever you're looking at than rather have 
just one portrait in the middle of your page. You get all that information together and um, it is going to be, um, it's, you'll, you'll be able to tell the story. Those are my strategies for movement in your nature journal. Again, you've got your owl head, and I'll zoom down on that a little bit, boom, boom. Um, your owl is looking over this way. Um, that big V on the forehead, so helpful. Then you're going to have the facial disc on the one side um, is going to be different size than the one on the other. All right, because this side is turning away from you. This eye here on the far side, um, that eye on the far side is going to what? be. Um, let me see. It's almost over. Just, uh, um, so that yeah, the 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 eye on the the, the far side over here. It's often closer to the inside edge than you think it should be. Um, and if there is, I'm going to draw it several different ways. If there's a lot of bristles in here, you'll often see that eye being kind of shaped like this, because this, this front edge is hidden behind some sort of bristly feathers in here. If you can, so see, all of that eye and also the pupil will be closer towards the center line than feels right. Um, if you can see more of that eye, sometimes this eye, I'll draw it on here, um, sometimes this eye you'll see it will have a slight little point coming in and then the outside part will be rounded. So you'll see that that eye may go to a little peak on the inner side, rounded on the outer. Um, or that peak may be obscured by bristly feathers and you'll get this sort of an effect. So that's just, I, I totally agree with you, Doug. That eye over there, crazy challenge. Um, so just when, um, you, when I'm practicing this, I'll do it from photographic reference. And then I can look at like, so far side I, um, you know, what, what are you going to be doing today to kind of make my life interesting? Right. And here, let's say I've got a bunch of bristles coming in, just kind of work this side of this eyes, owl's face. There's often just something very interesting going on on that on that side. Or actually, let's make this owl, ice owl sleepy. Look at this, I'm gonna make it sleepy. What I'm gonna do is have this eyelid come down. Wow. Good night, owl. There we go. So that's a, just a little bit on that. That I, I absolutely agree with Doug that that far side eye, really, really, really challenging. And so if there's one spot to on your owl drawing, you know, don't expect to get it on the first go round. But if you do it and then you erase and then you do it again and then you erase again and then you do it again and then you erase again, often you just chew up the paper right around here. Um, so a good uh, strategy may be knowing that that one is difficult is just off on the side, you know, just do, do just a few studies of what that eye can look like. What does that eye look like? And just work on that, just a few just little drafts. And then, okay, I'm getting a hang, handle on that eye. And then you can drop that in there. That might be a, a good way to uh, approach that. But absolutely agree with Doug, far side eye, crazy challenge. 